What do you do yeah. before the fight? See, a lot of people, they don't, knows, they're not recreating those situations, yeah, man. Everybody. This racist incident just happened to a pair of Asian TikTokers at an in and out It went viral. The guy did get arrested, but... We got to talk about it, David. Yeah, man. I would say 50 different American news outlets posted articles about this. We are talking about tens of thousands of comments on the internet. Some people are analyzing what the kid should have done. He should have hit him with a Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder left hook to the head. Some people are saying he should have called the police. He did the right thing because you don't know nowadays this guy could have had a gun. Other people are coming more from the other side being like, hey, man, I don't like what that guy said, but he shouldn't have went to jail. What? He just had an opinion on the TikTokers food eating. Is there any Anything wrong with that? And you just see every single comment across the spectrum. Andrew, we got to analyze the incident. You know, talk about some of the reactions and then give our takeaways. All right, everybody, we're going to show you an abridged version of the TikTok. If you want to watch the whole thing, you can click on the link down below. But uh, here, here, here's essentially what happened. Are you guys filming yourself eating? Yeah. You're weird, homosexual. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Japanese or Korean? Uh, I'm Korean. Yeah, you're Korean. Kim Jong boyfriend. You're Kim Jong-un's boyfriend? You know, we have been acquainted. You had gay sex with him. Ooh, would we'll not go that far. We're only on second base. Can I take you out to dinner? Come on, stop, stop, stop. Nothing, nothing. Stop. I'm, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, my you bad. What? I didn't say anything. You didn't say anything? No, sir. Nothing. Well, they can spit in your face and it's a Filipino shit or something. Well, it's a Filipino shit. Oh Anyways, you can try the yeah, spot. Andrew, I think my very first takeaway that I think I have to clear up a lot of confusion, at least uh, this is what I see a lot in the comment section, Andrew. I think a lot of Asians are probably going to react this way in the moment. Realistically. Yeah, yes. realistically, you are not expecting it. They're in San Ramon, which is a really nice area, really, really high median income. I believe it's like 175K. They're just doing a TikTok about eating the Flying Dutchman at In-N-Out, which is the joint without the patties and whatever. It's just the meat and the cheese. The off-menu item. They're not expecting this incident to go down where the, it even leads to him waiting outside for them to threaten them. Right. And honestly, uh, guys like this, and first of all, the suspect, I think he does have mental illness, he is unhinged, he probably was on drugs, he got arrested for also some prior incidences that he did a few Say days before. Say his name, Andrew. Jordan Douglas Craw. Jordan. 40 <laughs> years old, yeah. driving a silver Mustang. Not a, that rental, the must a rental definitely looks like he had to do with sunken it. in cheeks, which indicates some substance abuse. Yeah, I mean, listen. Uh, also, I do want to note that he did get arrested not only for this incident, but uh, this is the one incident that got was caught on camera, he was harassing a Filipino family a couple days before. I think he spit on him, and yeah. I believe he also cornered somebody in uh, with his car in a, in a parking garage. So he's clearly kind of been harassing and terrorizing this extremely nice neighborhood. So you know the San Marone police was like, guys, uh, we're going viral. We better handle this real quick because... This is not an area where we have guys like this. Why do you think this went so viral in comparison to, for example, the racist incidents that we covered against okay. Twitch streamers that are walking around the street? Okay, so this is on another level of severity. Now, this is not the worst racist thing that we've seen happen, of course, even in the past year. Of course, we've seen a lot worse. Um, thankfully, this is not as bad. But, but it's possibly who it happened to, too. It's a very good-looking, well-put-together yeah. couple yeah. that is, uh, you know what I mean? They, they, they just doing a TikTok by themselves. They're not even, like, walking around in the street with a selfie stick. Yeah. I will say guys who look like this with the K-pop style, the split bangs, you know, the girls there, I think she's kind of like maybe a TikTok, uh, I mean, an Instagram influencer. This type of stuff on this level doesn't really happen to them as much. But he did say racist remarks, and then he said homophobic remarks, and then the guy did kind of threaten him by saying, oh, I'm going to see you outside. Right, right. And by the way- So he hit him with the racism, the homophobia, and the physical threat. That is a threat, legit. So of course, I think that's why he got arrested. Listen, for the people out there, if you're watching this video, if you're wondering, nah, man, he just said some mad some mean words that was freedom of speech bro that was not just freedom of speech that was actually i, I have a pretty high tolerance for things that was a threat i did see a comment go out hey does this get you arrested nowadays because I, I got some video receipts of a bunch of incidents and i would like to get a bunch of people arrested <laughs> yeah well, you I know mean... which kind of gets to our response section i would say one of the main reasons why this went viral so viral that it even went more viral than i would have predicted within the asian community yeah is because a lot of people have gone through this type of medium tier aggression. Mm -hmm. It's not like low tier, like a microaggression. It's not ultra high tier. I would put this somewhere, and maybe you could even say it's lower middle or whatever, or mid mid. It's somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is the, one of the ones that is so hard to report for people without a video. 
You know what I mean? Like, right. they, it's hard to, like, categorize for people. And that's why there was so much diversity and arguing in the comment section about what he should have did, right? Because some people are like, how come this guy is acting like a, he, man, he just because he he looks like a BTS sissy boy and he's not, like, standing up and, like, beating that guy and body slamming him into the in and out table to show him a true Americana at the Americana burger spot. You know, like, how come there was so much, like, diversity? Yeah. And then you have more of, like, a, more street crowd being like, yeah, I wish he would do that to me. I'm hoping yeah. for the day that Jordan Craw does that to me because it's going to be a bad day for Jordan Craw. And then it's almost like, but then he obviously would uh, assess you if you're a street Asian and, and not do that to you. No, I mean, he doesn't mess with any Asians. Trust me, these people, even though they're unhinged and they're racist and they're like, you know, they don't got all their uh, screws right, They only have like 50% uh, of their brain, right? They're, I'm... He probably has more than 50. But anyways, they are still scanning on who is the easy target. That's why you see so many, unfortunately, women or like smaller people or elderly that are targeted for these type of remarks. They're not messing with the 6'2 or even the shaved head, tatted up Asian dudes. Guys, trust me. We know. And I know that those guys would handle it differently. I think I would handle it differently. We're not even considered the biggest uh, targets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we definitely had stuff like this yeah. happen to us before, now, uh, to be honest. I do want to know that this happened in a very nice bubble. So everything from those guys sitting at the in and out to this racist guy to the police coming in and uh, making a quick m arrest, this all happened in a very high income uh, area right. of and, California. And, and you're saying in a large city that has like all these types of murders and all these things going on, it's probably going to be way lower on the priority right. list. In Oakland or New York or SF or LA. I'm not saying that the police aren't going to like take a report for it, but you know, they probably got bigger stuff going on. San Ramon and but, it's a quiet neighborhood. But to be fair, I am really glad that these Korean TikTokers are doing the media interviews yes. and blowing it up because not because I think this incident was the worst thing that happened and there's other incidents that don't deserve attention, but I think that it makes everybody think about something more, uh, it's almost like a rep that they get to see in their mind and they get to juxtapose that would be like, oh, how would I react? Exactly. You know what it is? Uh, and I want to like... I guess you could compare it to, you know, someone who's like on the street, maybe like pick, collecting cans who gets assaulted, right? Now that's horrible. However, it is, it's almost sometimes unrelatable to a lot of people because uh, a lot of the younger generation now looks at these kids and be like, oh, I could be in this situation. That right, could right. literally be me. Like I have a friend who looks like that. This kid goes to college. These people go to college. So it's like, I think there's a lot to take away and you do have to review the game footage and kind of understand what you would do. I'm not telling everybody to go fight. I'm not telling everybody to, but, but just think of what you're going to do. Number three, Andrew, I do think there's a takeaway. Do you agree that like standing up for yourself in this type of situation, it is very tricky because you do bear some risk exposure if you engage in, in combat with this guy? For sure, man. And I think that anybody who really thinks in their heart that they were going to get physical with this guy, you know that there's a risk. But you know, but then you have to think make like, a calculated risk, like, right? yo, I, I'm more aggressive than this guy, or I usually carry around a knife. I know some people do and, you know, whatever. But I'm just saying, obviously, if you get into that, well, you know. But the thing is, it's like a lot of the, like, I understand that there's like, this guy is not going to be messing with a lot of like, Fully tatted Asians, right? No, hell but no. But those fully tatted no, Asians, I rarely see those guys get the. the, the but they're just thing. not going to get messed with in yeah. the same way. That's why I'm saying. That's why when people are like, "Yo, I hope he does that to me," I'm like, "Well, there's an actual reason why he's not going to do that to you because you look more scary." Right, right. That's that fishbowl's predator. Yeah. If you go to another fishbowl, the whole predatory hierarchy is like even, even, completely different. Even a super tall, nerdy-looking Asian dude, if he's 6'2", I don't think he's going to get messed with as much. Point number four, Andrew, what do you think about the debate where they were like, man, if this guy wasn't dressing like Jimin from like soft boy BTS, then he wouldn't have got identified as an easy target to get picked on. And then I was like, there is probably some truth to that. And like I said in previous videos, there's a reason why people, you know, want to dress a certain way to give off a certain image, maybe a certain level of intimidation factor. But other people, they don't feel like that's their lane. I do think I'm a, and and I'm not like it, not, this should never happen but the fact that we know that in this world it can happen in almost any neighborhood even San Ramon almost 175k a year for a household medium income um you just have to know that if you put forth a certain image and you know you like your hair done a certain way and you spend a lot of time doing that and you doing something out in public that's attracting attention unfortunately even at an in and out something might happen somebody might talk what, to you what do you think about more the perspective of like man this is why Asians get picked on all the time is because the guys act like this and diffuse it with humor and act like 
you know, try to defuse the situation or defer. Yeah, I know. I it's tough to say because I, it's kind of how they're raised, right, and how they're built, and, and their goals and their ability to take on different risk exposures and different yeah. probabilities happening. Um, number five, Andrew. I think if people want to end this in the future, it's really on the parents to like review this incident with their kids. Now that there's like yeah. 50 articles or 100 articles about it on the internet, and maybe ask their kids, like, what should you do? Or yes. here's the options. I think all organizations, whether it's a martial arts class or a church or a temple or any type of community. Yo, they, yeah, they should bust this video you, out, right? I think they should be having this conversation. This should not just be a conversation that the youth is having. I think the parents need to be on this and see this and see that, thankfully, it didn't end violently. There, nothing really horrible happened. However... How do you handle this, and what are you? What is protocol, and what are you going to do? Yeah. Because this is this is more likely to happen than even getting randomly punched. And this is why I got to give props to these, these two uh, Korean TikTokers, I believe Irene and Elliot, because they are like going into the media and they're giving interviews about this. And you could look at it two ways. You could be like, "Oh, what happened to them? It wasn't that bad. Why are they getting giving interviews about it?" But at the end of the day, it's good because it raises awareness, so people just know. It's actually like this incident and how viral it's gotten, it has a real opportunity to shift people's behaviors in the future. Yeah, I agree. Guys, uh, we're going to leave it at that. Let us know in the comments down below what you thought about this. What, Which side are you leaning on? Should he have been more aggressive to defend himself and stand taller and be more firm, or did he handle it fine? And I think that there's reasons for both, but also, what can you learn from this? Yeah. And I think, here's the thing, people may not agree on his reaction, but everybody can agree that you can learn something from this. Yo, that was a good point, Andrew. Every sort of Taekwondo spot right now, you know, a lot of kids do Taekwondo, yeah, right? They need to buy one of those wall projectors and they need to review this like game film just like they do game film yeah. in the NBA. Yeah, because you know what? I know that you're learning strikes. Maybe you're learning boxing, but that's like for the fight fight. How do you... What do you do yeah. before the fight? See, a lot of people, they don't, knows, they're not recreating those situations, yeah, man. everybody knows... Like, if you train a kick in Taekwondo, you'll know how to kick. But 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 when will you need to do it and what leads up to that? So, anyways, uh, let us know in the comments down below, everybody. And, uh, yeah, I guess this yeah, I guess this might happen again. This might happen to you. So, I guess the question is, what will you do? Yeah, and let us know if you had incidents like this happen before in your past and what you did. Uh, we're the Hot Pop Boys. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.